Miss Princess? Miss Princess Diane? I'm gonna go work on the stock trailer for Wayne. Okay, Miss Sweetheart. Miss Diane, <clears throat> she's just doing wonderful this morning. Just doing absolutely fantastic. And she's very beautiful. Aren't you, baby girl? Alright, y'all. <clears throat> so then I had my then took my three five steps this morning. Went for a walk run, got my blood pumping. Buddy of mine down the road's a farmer. He's got uh farm in Doddridge County and travels back and forth and he's up here sometimes at the stockyards. I don't know if you know, but the Buck Cannon stockyard right down the road from me. Um Anyway, he's got this stock trailer. He got a hold of me recently saying he had some trouble with the rear gate and um, wanted to know if he could bring it by for me to work on. And of course, I said, sure. Uh, this aluminum stock trailer, it's a decent trailer. And I'll show you the, the issue that, that he was pointing out. This thing had been here before and got something else worked on. And at that time when he got something else worked on, he had mentioned to me that the, the, the sleeve stopper gizmo that was down here was gone. And this was falling down too far. And I think at that time was when we put these bolts in it and those bolts were keeping it from sliding down too far and they're look looks like they're getting stripped and on an angle and all kinds of wonky and he said the way this was right here he's noticing that sometimes when he gets loaded uh, and it don't take a whole lot of livestock to do it he said sometimes just one or two uh, beef cattle in there or something and he can't get this to line up and as you can see right here It looks like it needs to go up You know, it's just barely latching but sitting here right now If we open it up, it does latch fine and he said well, that's cuz uh, It's just sitting right. It's sitting pretty level sometimes when there's a you know when there's weight in it that's it's not setting just right. Now, see there it closed, but it struggled. And uh, what he was noticing was that it, it was falling down too far right here. And that was pretty much all he saw. That was the only thing that you know, he was wanting me to come up with something that would hold that up better. And he didn't see much more than that to work on. There's a lot more that needs worked on here. When uh, he dropped it off, actually, when I wasn't here, and um, when I got here to look at it, uh, I got to looking at it, and you know, if you follow my channel, you might have seen not too long ago, I worked on one of these where the whole structure in the back at the corners was coming apart, had a lot of cracking. This trailer's got the same problem, and I'm sure that all of them, if you run them a while, you're going to run into that. And so that's what I was looking for is see what I'm thinking's made this situation even worse is the fact that... Uh, this thing's cracked in the corners and the way that you have the cracks in the corners now when you get weight in here in odd places like it is when you're hauling livestock and it twists and articulates this trailer that's going to make this even harder to shut there's some adjustment there 
with that width that you need. But the key component of this is this the back square frame of this these trailers needs to be held together. And let me show you this one. We look at this top corner. That's cracked. So you can just imagine the amount of movement. I'm only 180 pounds, you know. Uh, some of these livestock weigh a ton. Both sides. We see there's a rear plate back here. Looks like it's got steel rivets holding it. And it's cracked all the way through. And of course, we don't know what cracking we got underneath of that. But if we come over here and open the door. As you can expect, you know, it's coming apart down here too. You're going to have that. Because, uh, like I was telling Wayne yesterday, we were looking at it, we were talking about it. You have cracking and metal fatigue. It's like a zipper. It's something that, once you get it going, it's just going to keep going, you know. So we're going to see what we can do to stop it. We're going to have to cut these plates off and make some new plates. And one thing to keep in mind on something like this is inside of these hollow channels where we're going to be welding, there's wire for lights. So we're going to have to look in there and, and try not to burn up any wires. And if we got to pull the wires out or whatever it takes to, you know, they got to have lights. So whatever we got to do to keep it working or fix it, if we do burn it up, what we got to do. So let's get going on this thing. But... The very first component of this is uh, that Wayne didn't know that I was going to be working back here, you know, inside the trailer. He thought I was just going to be working on that latch. So, one thing we got here that we don't want. This is what you would call the scatological material of a bovine. Um, we don't want to get our MIG gun and our tools and, and, and stuff all rolling around in that. We don't want to be, we don't want to have this in the shop and be getting our feet in this and tracking it out of there. And you know, being the NBS welder, I have absolutely no problem eliminating the scatological material of a male bovine. So we're getting rid of this bullshit. Let's get out the pressure washer, take care of that, and uh, we can get to work on this thing. Let's do it! For years with these kind of things that you roll around like this pressure washer with a really short handle, you know, you don't really want the handle to be longer when you store it because it's going to take up a whole bunch more room. They don't want a longer handle on it when they package it and ship it because it's extra stuff. But stuff like this with the shorter handles, when you try to move it around, it seems like you can't really get a full step. And it's just... It's amazing what a pain it is to move stuff like that. But something that surprises me is how simple solutions are sometimes. I got a two by two tomato steak that I stuck right here a couple of years ago. I'm telling you, this is absolutely night and day difference moving this thing around.
Now that we've got one of these plates off here, <clears throat> we can see what we're dealing with. That's where we've got the break. Um, and the steel pins that were holding it on there, I grinded those, uh, I grinded the, the outside off with a cutting wheel and then hit them with a sanding pad. But you can see right there's one of those steel pins. And that thing that's on the back is not really a nut. Um, I, I'm not, I don't remember how those work. It's kind of like a steel rivet. And I think when I worked on another one of these trailers, I had a viewer comment on what those exactly are called. And daggone it, I can't even remember now what it was. But anyway, obviously this is where the two pieces come together. And that's the place where... You know, there's been so much motion and it cracked that plate. Uh, but you've got those steel pins that were holding it here and here. And then it was welded across here and here. And with this open, uh, that gives me a better view of what I might burn up by welding on this thing. So we'll come up with a plan to fix this. And obviously those plates, where they're broken... Uh, needs welded back together and we're going to have to figure out a way to to weld uh weld or assemble this back together somehow without without burning the wires up while we're on the subject of burning these wires up i want to show you what's inside of here i don't know if you're going to be able to see that that's why i figured i'd pull some of it out but what those wires are surrounded by inside of here, that's pretty much dry tinder. That's good stuff to start a fire. You would not, if, you would not have to weld on this outer tube very much, and, and you'd have a full-blown fire in there. There's plenty of air and plenty of fuel. Got to make some guards here that I can shove into that aluminum tube that'll definitely uh, hold those wires back away from where I might want to be welding there. Uh, I'm going to want one going horizontally. I'm going to want one in here running vertically. And I'm going to want to make sure that the wires are behind the foil so that where I'm welding uh, on the outer perimeter of this thing, I'm not burning them wires. I set that plate on this uh, on this piece of aluminum. I'm going to be welding this. This is a thicker plate than what I have. And I am going to be welding that back together uh, and using it. But I want to plate over it just for extra. Um, so I'm going to use some 1 8 that I've got on hand. And um, so I've set that on top of here and traced it. And on the... The outer edges, I, I think I'm going to be fine with the, the pieces that I cut matching up even with that plate. But on the rest of it, like in here, I think I'm going to want it a little smaller. So I'm going to cut inside of this line quite a bit around the rest of it. And probably here too, cut inside of the line. I had a comment... Uh, one of the times I was working some aluminum, and I had mentioned before uh, about how you can cut aluminum with your woodworking tools. If you want to cut with a jigsaw, circular saw, or whatever, it does a nice job. Um, and I do that on occasion. I, I use that. 
I don't always do it, especially if it's an edge I'm going to weld. Um, because if it's an edge I'm going to weld, especially if it's a radius or something that, you know, would be a little harder to cut. Um, if you're going to weld over the end of it, it doesn't matter how perfect your cut is. Nobody's ever going to see it. That's one thing. Another thing is I feel like the plasma is faster. I think my plasma is a faster way to, to cut stuff than messing with the saw. Um, I also notice that sawing the aluminum, especially with a circular saw, it makes a bunch of chips that are a pain in the butt. They stick to everything. They're all over the place. Uh, I find them in my clothes, in the washing machine, uh, in the carpet. They're just, they're a pain. I don't have that issue with the dross that blows out from cutting it with a plasma. So just overall, you know, I think if the plasma will work, use it. It is a huge advantage uh, that you can work aluminum with woodworking tools and, and you can use any of your carbide tipped woodworking tools, circular saw, jigsaw blades that are carbide tipped, uh, even router, you know, you can do nice stuff. So. I'm going to cut these out with a plasma and clean them up with a sander and weld them up. Be cleaning these up mostly with a sanding pad with a rubber backer. These things work really good on aluminum. Don't forget about your beeswax. The old beeswax trick. Get your ground, get your sanding pad turning and rub a little beeswax on your sanding pad. That'll stop that clogging the way that aluminum wants to clog up in the pad. In the radiuses inside of here is where you'll find that these type of pads with the with the rubber backer behind them don't work that great they work a lot better on the the areas that are flat you're going to have better luck in here with a flap disc and if the radius is really small you might have to use a burr bit getting ready to weld this thing up and I've taken 
this plate right here is the one that goes on the side where the gate shuts and it's got that bracket that bracket's got to go on there so there's holes where the bolts go through and we want to think ahead of the time and go ahead and clamp this outer plate on here and drill those holes through that way uh, we won't have to try to find where they are after this is welded on and covered them up Got the double plates all back on, welded up. Welded up these corners at the bottom. Where they were cracked. Ran several beads there. These double plates. You know, the first plates welded to the trailer. The second plate's welded to the first plate. There was a crack right there. That was cracking and, and if he hadn't got if he if we hadn't got this fixed, that would have continued. These cracks, you know, you gotta the sooner you get on them, the less they're going to damage. But uh, like I, I always say, it's like a zipper. Once it starts going, it just easily goes. I ended up, they got this angle iron riveted in here too. I ended up welding that angle iron to it right here. And then we had our crack was here. So maybe that'll, maybe that'll help stiffen that. And maybe having that, having that welded to that angle iron could, uh, stop that crack right there i don't know aluminum's a weak material it's yeah i'd hate to guarantee anything with it but all right we got to get that uh bracket that holds the door put it back on there and we'll see if we can get the door fixed so the problem with the latch that we needed to address was the way that the latch the whole rod the whole thing was coming down too far it was sagging down too much and uh remember there was some of them bolts right there uh self-tapping screws that that was working before but it's it was not working now they got all wonky and quit working uh so what i've done is i'm using this jack to split the difference and hold that rod where it's centered up good you know if it's a if it's if you split the difference and you got it where a little bit up or a little bit down won't hurt that's the best position and then Wayne bought that pivot arm bushing and I took a cutting wheel and I've cut it in half and I kind of had to lay them on the table and, and take these two halves and open them up a little bit to get them to be big enough to fit on here but they're fitting on here now so i'm just going to weld this on the rod and this will slide this will slide right here should be no problem sliding around there but with these on there with these welded on there and and, and this is this is going to be a limiting bushing where that can only slide so far down with this resting on that hinge bracket, well, that should take care of this problem. Well, I had something kind of threw me for a loop right there, but it's all good now. There was this sleeve up here 
that was bolted on and it was still bolted on from the way it was before and i didn't realize it but when i raised this thing up and put it in position and welded that this sleeve was being pressed up against that really really tight so this thing didn't move very good uh it didn't it didn't uh swing open the, really smooth at all and I, it took me a minute to realize that that's what it was but it's it's nice now that lines up down there and that's going in up there and that's latching right there so let's put these lights back together I think we're getting almost done with this that's it for that Got them corners fixed and plated. What was once cracked is cracked no more. Might crack again. This aluminum's pretty weak material, you know, and it takes a beating on these trailers. Got that sleeve deal put on there, holding that rod in the right place. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.